Welcome to New Physica. Everywhere we look in nature, patterns repeat themselves. The curl of a surfing wave, for example, is mirrored in clouds and on other planets like Saturn. And now they've been spotted in the Sun's atmosphere. This shape of wave is often formed by something called a Kelvin-Helmholtz, or KH instability, in which two fluids flow by each other with different speeds or densities. For example, in clouds, yes, you have uh, one layer where there is a cloud, okay, and then a higher layer where you have a jet stream. So at the boundary between these two regions, you start seeing this cloud rolling up. If you look at water waves, the wind will sort of cause it to roll up into a bigger and bigger wave, but eventually this wave will break. This is very similar to the Kevin Helms stability that takes place on the sun, where we have erupting plasma and we have stationary plasmas. Spotting a repeating pattern like this is always good news. Since scientists already know that the movement of the waves transfers energy to the water, they know that the same thing should be happening in the sun. That extra energy helps explain how the sun's atmosphere, or corona, heats up to some 1,000 times hotter than the sun's surface. These waves were spotted in the second coronal mass ejection, or CME, recorded by the Solar Dynamics Observatory, which began looking at the sun in March 2010. We were able to see as the CME erupted, uh, it generated basically a region where the plasma was evacuated. Since the material from the CME lifted up into space, we see a dark region that uh, corresponds to the low density region evacuated by the CME and we see just adjacent to it a brighter region where we have a denser plasma. So now we see a region where the vortices start to roll up. Astronomers have long thought that turbulence in the corona might help heat it up, but solar observations still can't see the way the atmosphere moves at small scales. Each of the rolling surfing waves spotted by SDO is about the size of the United States, and they likely became more and more turbulent the same way that a breaking water wave froths at its crest. So it is a way of taking out the energy from the shear flow and converting it eventually into heat. Some scientists thought that the sun's powerful magnetic field would prevent KH waves from forming, so the heliophysicists who observed the turbulence on the sun needed additional evidence. To support this interpretation, we also developed a model, a computational numerical model. We set up this model to resemble what takes place in this region and we see uh, that indeed this kind of shear can form uh, can help the stability and generate the waves that are similar to the waves that we observe in nature. A good surfer understands those waves intuitively. Thankfully, scientists understand them physically too. Watching how they roll around the sun opens the door for more research and better solar models, helping scientists predict the activity of the star we live with. On Arctic nights, the aurora often flames across the winter sky. What is it, and where does it come from? This is where the tale of the aurora starts, on the sun, 
a star of average size among billions of other stars in our Milky Way. The sun acts as an enormous power plant. The energy is created deep inside the core of the sun. Here the temperature is over 14 million degrees and the pressure so enormous that hydrogen atoms are squeezed together into another element, helium. This nuclear reaction releases energy. The light radiates outward from the core of the sun. In the outer layers, the heat moves to the surface in huge eddies called convection cells. These electrical currents of charged gas create magnetic fields inside the sun. In some places, strong magnetic fields push their way up through the surface. They slow down the eddies of hot gas. The surface cools and darker sunspots appear. The electrically charged gas is called plasma. The plasma drags the magnetic field further outwards. The magnetic field stretches and twists like a rubber band. And then the rubber band breaks. Several billion tons of plasma is hurled out from the sun. This is called a solar storm. The solar storm can reach speeds over 8 million kilometers an hour. After six hours, it blows past the planet Mercury. After 12 hours, the planet Venus. storm reaches Earth. When the solar storm reaches our planet, something strange happens. An invisible shield, the Earth's magnetic field, deflects the storm. The magnetic fields couple together and create a funnel where the gas streams down on the daylight side of the pole. This is the daylight aurora. The magnetic fields stretch further back and couple together. The magnetic rubber band breaks, and gas from the solar storm streams along the magnetic lines towards the poles on the night side. This is the nighttime aurora. <laughs> 